Okay, I'm back. Now, I went ahead and pulled the trim, all the pieces off the right-hand side, which is just kind of a repeat of what we saw on the left side here. Uh, I'm draining the radiator now. Let's focus. There we go. That little piece there. Kind of like automotive. You just screw that out counterclockwise. Let me see if I can get in there. This piece right here, it just screws out. But unlike many automotive, it has a little drain there. This thing comes pretty much, it pops out like that and lets it drain. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop the radiator cap. Now, I'm going to try to do this in hopes that I can drain the overflow tank as well. Uh, the instructions tell you to pinch off the overflow tank before you remove the radiator cap, but I'm going to refill it with fresh fluid, so I just soon have that go out with the radiator. So, let's see what happens here. I'll take this off. Alright, here's the radiator cap right here. Here's the overflow tank. This is where you check your fluid level. So I'm going to hopefully... Let's see if I can do it with just one click. Oh, I was afraid of that. Okay, I'm going to have to move this piece over here. Alright, so I am draining the overflow tank as well as the radiator. All right, now, I need to remove the radiator. There's some clips that need to come out. One is right here. This is kind of a little brace going up against the engine. So I'll need to pull this clip, kind of like some of the, uh, the flex lines on the uh, brakes. Kind of pull that thing out of the way and then you can pull that bushing up and get them out of there and then I'll need to disconnect the uh, upper radiator hose here and then we've got the lower radiator hose <laughs> over here and then I need to remove the overflow tank from there okay here we are looking at the uh, left front of the bike and uh, it's kind of difficult to see but right in there one of those little posts you have to pull this clip off now to get the clip off it's kind of like an e-clip I, mean, I can just put my finger on there and remove it or probably a little stronger with my thumb I'm just going to take my thumb and pull that out and there's what that clip looks like. Now it just fits in a groove. There's also a washer. We'll uh, want to make sure that, let's see, let's see them, there we go. We want to make sure that we get that washer. We don't want to lose that. Here, there's that one. And I just grab him kind of the same way. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to put my light up there for you to see it, but removal is just the same way. I'm going to all right, uh, it's a little quieter now. I turned off that uh, the one heater. Now, on the right side of the bike, if we come over, we can see kind of by the radiator here. Right here is one of those zip ties, the wire ties that we have to cut. Uh, looks like we got the crank center there, and I believe, yeah, that one runs down to the, the crank there. So, crank center and than the uh, connector for the cooling fan. So we need to cut that zip tie right there and uh, disconnect them. So I'll go ahead and do that and uh, get that all disconnected. A few things that I've done since uh, I paused. I removed this front air handler. Now I just pulled straight out on it and that gave me quite a bit of room. Now there's a grommet in here one on the other side that kind of holds this into the radiator, so be careful with that. Also, I had to remove the connectors here for my turn signals. There's one on this side, 
another one on the other side. Now, getting that out of the way, gives me a little more room to work. Not a whole lot, but lets me see a little bit more. Also, what I did is uh, I've got, again, I think uh, these are removed. You get the crank center and the fan connector removed. Uh, I disconnected the uh, lower radiator hose and went over to the water pump. And that goes right up into here. There's a rather large bolt that holds it into place. So he just comes right out there. And again, the bolt, this guy right here. So I removed him, got him out of there. Now be careful when you pull that one out, that the O-ring stays in place here, okay? This is going into the water pump. Now, I went ahead and also removed it from the lower radiator. Instructions don't say to do that, but I did it just to get it out of my way. Now, once I removed this lower hose, I get all kinds of room rocking this back and forth. Now, about the only thing left to do is to remove those two rubber grommets that I'd shown you earlier. Uh, I've got the clips and the washers removed from them. Now all I have to do is carefully pry them out. Now, the one over on this side. All right, this side. Here we go, there's the post. And there's the rubber grommet at the top of our radiator. Now, it does not want to come out very easily. So I got a screwdriver back behind it and very carefully wiggled it. So I've got this side removed. The other side I'll need to remove and then we'll see if this radiator is ready to come out. Now, there's him. Now, trying to get him out. Again, I'm gonna try to get a screwdriver. I'm gonna try to put a screwdriver. Again, it's difficult to see with a camera, about impossible to see with a camera. I'm gonna try to put a little bit of uh, pressure behind this and see if I can't remove that. And unfortunately, I can't hold this in place and uh, shine a light and use the screwdriver at the same time. So, well, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it here and see how that works. Okay. Now, I've got that uh, grommet removed from this post. Grommet was already removed from this post over here. And you can see that the radiator itself is now dropped down. Now I also had a zip tie right there and one right there that I had to remove. It's holding this hose in place there. Okay, this is another return hose, I guess. So now it's out. Now all I gotta do is pull the thing out and hope I can get it out without uh, having to raise the bike or do anything stupid like that. I'm going to try to uh, remove it, I think, with the bucket and all. We'll see if I can't slide that whole thing out through here. Now, lower radiator hose, everything is going to come with it. And uh, I think that's a good place right there. Uh, to stop. Uh, one other thing I suppose I should mention before I do stop. I've had problems before with the radiator fan and there's a lot of little rocks and things get, get stuck up in there. So if you're going to go ahead and do this yourself, this would be an opportune time to make sure that you have no rocks or pebbles or anything stuck in the fan. Uh, what had happened was it at a pedal that kind of wedged itself here between the blade and the fan housing and the fan couldn't turn on. Now, fortunately, this gives me a warning. So there was a uh, DTC associated with this um, and it uh, let me know that things were starting to get warm. So uh, I went ahead and cleared the pebbles all out of there. Now, I didn't tear it down to this point. Um, I just pulled some of the uh, the fairing away from it and was able to get up in there 
with a uh, little bit of air and just my uh, my fingers in a mirror so I got all that taken care of but anyways something something you might want to look at if you uh, do this all right I think I'm gonna pull this thing out put it off to the side and uh, this is probably a good place to stop this part of the video <laughs>